notice the drone doesn't actually turn. It faces the same direction its entire flight. Hmm. It'll just move over and it'll actually fly back hmm. this path. And then when it gets down here, it'll move over to the right and go forward. I think that's just uh, the, the it's, when it tries, it has, it has to tip over in order to move sideways. Gallons, but when it reserves itself, tank. that's probably water flocking around. It's probably the, the, the whole gallons, thing to calibrate itself by gravel. It's probably, it's probably automatically acre, level. It's just the system trying to re get itself back level if I have to get it. now is I'm in the middle of a mission and it's not completely done. It comes back home automatically. I can land it manually or automatically when it gets here. Mm -hmm. Press go again. If you notice I was not flying that, it flew automatically on its own. It's going to go back to that stopping point, continue its mission until it's done. What's the battery life on that one? You're probably going to swap a battery. It takes quite a bit of battery. Those batteries probably weigh 12 pounds a piece. But to run the pumps, fly the drone, keep it on track, it uses a lot of battery, especially when it's hauling 25 pounds of, of liquid. Um, I'm going to say that if I started with a full battery, I'd fill it up twice with one battery, so four or five gallons total sprayed, um, get two point something acres done, and then swap a battery on my third refill. Okay. How long does it take to charge the battery? To re if you take a battery back. all the way down to zero, it's going to take an hour to recharge, but if you, if you brought your battery all the way down to zero, you had to go out in the field and bring your drone home. <laughs> <laughs> So at that point, I'm going to probably, I've got an alarm set on here that at 30% it starts beeping at me. I can then pause the mission, bring it home, swap the battery, and take it back out. I'd prefer, I'd prefer to logistically and operationally make it work to where, even if I'm at 44%, if it makes sense to put a fresh battery in to let it go out, swap it then, and put a, put a battery on the charger at 40%, it's only going to take, you know, 35, 40 minutes to charge. We, uh, we've been told by our contractors, and I can attest to this myself as well, to run all day long, you're going to need a generator running two chargers, and you're going to want 10 fresh batteries at the start of each day. So that'll keep you in a, in a cycle that can keep your battery charges can keep up to keep your drone in the air as much as you want. Does it follow the contour of the ground you set a certain elevation, or how does it deal with hills and things like that? If you look close as it got over there, it did exactly that. Um, so... There's a gray spinny thing that's kind of down here in the pasture that you can't see. That's our LIDAR that does keep it. it if we are in a hilly situation, it's going to do its best to stay. I had it set at seven and a half feet. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, as the hills go down or come up, it's going to do its best to adjust to stay right at seven and a half. So it has a LIDAR on the drone still? The drones are RTK equipped. Um, a lot of people plant with RTK. How can you tell that this drone is RTK equipped? Well, one, that's an RTK base station, so bringing a satellite signal. And then there's two knobs on this drone that receive that RTK signal. 
model, there's one here and one there. There's another model of this drone that is not RTK equipped. Um, it's, it's personal preference, it's how precise you want to get. But. How are you all, you're all contractors, how are they priced like on a fungicide application versus a helicopter or an airplane? We, we set the minimum with our contractors. So let's just say if there was five of us here that were all contractors, you guys can price it however you want. Know that the minimum is going to be 150 per hour. So it depends on how many acres you can cover in an hour when you want to set your per acre fee. If we can only do 10 acres per hour, then we're 15 bucks per acre, which isn't out of line for the fungicide. Um, aerial application industry. You you charge 150 per hour and you can knock out 14 acres in an hour, you're down to 12, 11 bucks an acre, mm. and that's really competitive. Um, so we, we set the minimum, so that way, if we do get several jobs in Kentucky to divvy out amongst our contractors, they all know going into that same bid meeting that someone may be at 150. That's more than one drone. It'd be 150 per drone. Yep. Huh. For a minimum. And yeah, 15. I mean, it's 15 bucks an acre if you're only covering 10 acres per hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 10 acres would be pretty feasible. We've got guys doing 14, 15 at three gallons per acre. Oh, there's a note with one. Yeah, so behind the scenes right now, if you would talk to the right person at Bayer Crop Sciences or BASF, they would tell you they're doing studies on extremely low use rate products to get the same control and efficacy as as what we do at 2 or 10 or 15 gallons per acre. They're doing some studies with formulations that are like a quart per acre total. Um, so with the drone, um, you saw it disrupting the soybean canopy really, really well as we flew across it, just the down pressure of the, of the propellers itself. That disruption of the canopy allows us to make a pretty good application on whatever, whether it's the underside of the leaf for a spider mite, um, whether it's I don't know if you guys deal with bird cucumber late season um, and corn, um, but we, we can definitely get fungicide all the way to the ear leaf um, with, with two gallons per acre. Um, the CDMS, we have a, an entire list of about 16,000 products that do have an aerial label um, from, you know, from a label and a legal standpoint, you would then look at what that aerial label says and does it say we can do two gallons per acre? If so, thumbs up. Does it say we need to do five? It's doable. Blake's doing a lot of five gallons per acre um, applications at Murray State. Um, obviously, your efficiency gets knocked down pretty, pretty drastically at that point. But. Is five the upper limit? Is five gallons per, per acre the upper limit? You think? Yeah. With this drone, I don't think we can do more than five. I've, I've tried ten, and that's it's pushed it. After the five is what we figured out, is, and five is still kind of pushing it a little. But then again, I do sm really small plots too, so it depends on the size of the acre and stuff you're doing. DJI is a Chinese company, so they give me everything on here in <laughs> different measurements of what I'm used to. So it gives me uh, feet per second. Really, I think we're flying at around 12 miles per hour. Mm. 12 to 15 is what I've been told. I can't say that this has told me that, nor have I done the math conversions um, to figure out feet per second to miles per hour, but three batteries, two chargers, the RTK stand, the upgraded pumps and booms, um, the remote control obviously comes with it, 10 batteries to operate all day long, that's going to put you at 35,000. Easy number to remember, it's not going to be exactly that, but it's a pretty easy number to remember. If you wanted to buy three drones, because you can't operate three with one remote control, um, and you wanted our, our mix and fill station that many of you probably can't see because it's in this back corner um, of the trailer. If you wanted a trailer, three drones, liquid and dry, upgrade kits, 30 batteries, six chargers, generator, uh, that puts you around $150,000 investment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Drone instead for 
or one backup? Right. If you wanted to pay for a fourth, you could. Um, we, we haven't done that yet, as of now. Yep. A couple of our contractors have ran into a couple issues with their drones. We've swapped them out of drones so that our group, uh, our support technician team in Iowa City, they're actually certified via DJI to repair these types of drones. Um, they've brought drones to us. If it wasn't a, a couple hour fix, we sent them home with a, another drone to keep them running and then we'll swap it back out when they're just fixed. It would be very similar to what you guys would see on a DJI software. There's a couple more unlocks that DJI has worked with us on. I think we're the only ones that can upload a shape file via SSID card. And there's a couple other unique things that they say we're the only ones using, but I don't know if you guys know what those are. <laughs>